Anastasia Anna Steele, a 21-year-old English literature major at the Washington State University satellite campus, is mild, mannered, and modest in contrast to the 27-year-old wealthy entrepreneur she is scheduled to interview, Christian Gray, who is straightforward and determined. The guy sits atop his high skyscraper, preparing for his 10-minute interview with Miss Cavanaugh. However, Kate Cavanaugh's Kate teases Anna about her wholesome outfit, and she responds by kissing Kate's forehead before leaving. At the lobby of Mr. Gray's office, Anna is greeted by a slew of beautiful blonde women wearing sleek and fitted attire, and she immediately feels out of place with her more pious, looking outfit. Her roommate has fallen ill leaving Anna to interview him in her place. Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Mystery Recaps. Today, we will recap a 2015 romance drama movie named Fifty Shades of Grey. To know what happens later, keep on watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. From the moment Anna enters the room, it's clear that she's not like the other women around her. While they are well groomed and confident, Anna is ill, groomed, and seems out of place. One of the women sends her to Christian's room with a tense and uneasy manner, indicating that Anna is not someone they are used to dealing with. When Anna stumbles into the room, interrupting Christian's quiet reflection by the window, she is immediately overwhelmed by his eloquent aura. Throughout the interview, Christian's intense gaze makes her feel uncomfortable, but she manages to hold her own. She reads out Kate's unoriginal questions, but her clever retorts demonstrate that she has a sharp mind. Christian's position as a powerful businessman and control freak is evident, but Anna is not afraid to speak out against him. She correctly identifies him as a control freak, which he wears like a badge of pride. Christian emphasizes that he has no problem understanding people and harnessing their talents, but Anna sees through his facade. As the interview progresses, Anna stumbles over her words and even mentions that Christian is adopted, which she quickly apologizes for. However, this leads to a moment of levity when Anna awkwardly blurts out whether Christian is gay, causing both of them to laugh. Christian then offers her a spot in their local internship program, indicating that he is becoming more and more interested in her. Christian's attraction to Anna's surprising resistance and sharp mind is palpable, and he postpones his next meeting to spend more time with her. He assumes the role of interrogator, wanting to learn more about her. Anna is startled by his offer but declines, indicating that she doesn't think she would fit in. However, Christian may have made a connection between Anna's interest in literature and her attempt to see beyond his enigmatic and loveless exterior. Anna had just finished a tense interview when she stepped outside into the rain. Despite the bad weather, she remained unbothered and went about her day, reporting to work at a hardware store. Her boss, Clayton, asked for her assistance in another aisle, and it was there that she was surprised to see Christian Gray, the man whose picture Kate had trouble removing from the checkout counter. Christian, ever the smooth talker, offered to conduct a photo session for Kate and Anna. The photo shoot took place at the Heathman Hotel, where Christian was now residing, and it almost felt like a repetition of their first encounter. Anna was still as blunt and awkward as before and Christian always acted like he had the upper hand in the conversation. However, Anna was quick to call him out on it, and they started talking more. Christian asked Anna about her family, and she shared how her stepfather raised her, and how her mother was currently married to her fourth husband, because she was afflicted with romanticism. When Anna asked if Christian had a girlfriend, he replied that he didn't do the girlfriend thing. Suddenly, a biker almost hit Anna, but Christian pulled her out of the way. When he touched her face, she closed her eyes and he softly stroked her face. But when Christian asked if she was romantic, Anna responded angrily, stating that she had to be because she was a literature major. Later that evening, Anna received a parcel from Christian, which contained first edition copies of two Thomas Hardy novels. While she was shocked by the gesture, she was also annoyed by Christian's erratic behavior. Anna didn't want to tolerate a wishy, washy man like Christian, especially after he raised her hopes, only to see them fall when he learned that she was a nerd. At a bar where Anna and her friends were celebrating their graduation, Anna consumed far more alcohol than usual. She made a drunken call to Christian, thanking him for the expensive books before telling him that she would be returning them. Anna began to imitate Christian, 
ordering her around and alternately wanting and needing her to go. Despite Christian's adamant desire to know where she was, Anna refused to share that information and hung up the phone. In a short while, Christian contacted her and warned her not to leave. It's unclear how Christian was able to determine which pub Anna was in. Was it his IAT? Experts on the case? Or was he simply a creep of the first order? What do you think? How did Christian track Anna? Let us know in the comment section. Jose has been smitten with Anna for a while. And when she steps out of the pub to get some fresh air, he follows her. Anna is shivering from the cold, and Jose, being the gentleman he is, covers her with his denim jacket. With a sudden burst of courage, Jose confesses his constant feelings for Anna and asks for a kiss, but Anna refuses. Trying his luck, Jose hugs Anna tightly, hoping she'll change her mind. However, Christian intervenes and pushes Jose away, just as Anna unexpectedly throws up on the ground. Concerned about her well-being, Christian offers to take Anna back to his place, but she is worried about leaving Kate alone. Fortunately, Christian has brought his brother along, so he reassures Anna that Kate won't be alone. The next morning, Anna wakes up dressed in different clothes, with two blue pills and a glass of orange juice on the nightstand, with the message, consume me. Christian, who has a condescending attitude towards others, admits to changing Anna's clothes and sleeping next to her, but reassures her that nothing happened between them because he doesn't like sleeping with corpses. As they get ready to leave, Christian hints at his desire for something more sensual, but it's unclear if he's only interested in hookups. In the hotel elevator, Christian can no longer contain his desire for Anna and begins kissing her passionately. Unfortunately, their intimate moment is cut short by the arrival of a group of businessmen. Upon returning to Kate's apartment, Anna discovers Elliot and Kate hooking up on the couch. Christian finds this amusing and imitates his brother's actions, much to Anna's discomfort. Kate starts questioning Anna about Christian's actions, but Anna simply admits that he kissed her once and nothing more. Anna's shift at Clayton's was painfully uneventful. All she could think about was the night ahead with Christian. The mere thought of it sent shivers down her spine. Finally, the evening came, and Taylor, Christian's driver, came to pick her up. Anna's heart raced as she stepped into the car and headed to the top of a building where Christian waited with a helicopter. As Christian buckled her into the seat, she couldn't help but feel the rush of excitement. To her surprise, Christian revealed that he would be the one piloting the helicopter, and the two of them soared over the bright lights of New York City. When they arrived at Christian's place, Anna was presented with a non-disclosure agreement. She was sworn to secrecy about their relationship, and Christian led her to a door down the hall. As they entered, Anna's eyes widened at the sight of the room. The walls were covered in red velvet, and there was an array of toys and equipment that left her stunned into silence. Christian nervously waited for her reaction, afraid that he might have upset her. Anna, struggling to process her emotions, asked Christian what being a submissive meant. Christian confidently explained that he was a dominant and wanted Anna to be his submissive. He wanted her to surrender herself to him completely, willingly. Despite his explanation, Anna struggled to understand the concept. Christian further added that Anna would have to stay in a separate room whenever he was around for three days a week and they would not be sharing the same bed. After much back and forth, Christian and Anna ended up hooking up. But Anna couldn't accept the idea of being alone in a separate room for three days a week. Christian understood her decision and claimed he was incapable of forming romantic relationships. As they navigated their relationship, Christian's mother made an unannounced visit. She was pleased to meet Anna, the first girl Christian had ever introduced to her. The two of them shared a brief encounter before she left. Anna's relationship with Christian was far from conventional, but as she danced around the kitchen in nothing but a top, cooking breakfast for Christian, she couldn't help but feel a semblance of romance. She felt like she was his, and in return, he was hers. It was a unique relationship, but it was working. Tell us your thoughts on this will their relationship last, or is it just a few moments of illusion? Let us know in the comments section. Anna and Christian's relationship takes a turn towards the unconventional, as Christian offers to make Anna his submissive. While Anna is initially intrigued, she becomes increasingly put off as Christian emphasizes the unromantic nature of their arrangement. She expresses a desire for normalcy, but Christian is unable to accommodate her. 
In an attempt to win her over, Christian showers Anna with extravagant gifts and offers a contract for their arrangement. Anna studies the contract and comes up with a plan to negotiate the terms. She arrives at Christian's office in a seductive dress, ready to talk business. After coming to an agreement, Christian tries to persuade Anna to stay and hook up again, but she playfully rebuffs him. Despite the unconventional nature of their relationship, Anna finds herself becoming more comfortable in her own skin and taking initiative with her intimate affairs. Meanwhile, Christian is learning to prioritize his time for Anna. Their relationship takes an even more unexpected turn when Christian becomes a special guest speaker at Kate's graduation. As Anna continues to explore her desires, the future of their relationship remains uncertain. As Anna receives her diploma on stage, she shakes hands with Christian, who once again tries to convince her to go through with their contract. Anna agrees and steps down from the stage, chuckling at Christian's persistence. Later, at Anna's apartment, Christian surprises her with a brand new car as a graduation gift. Anna is taken aback by the expensive gift and accidentally rolls her eyes in disbelief. Christian, who warned Anna earlier that he would spank her if she rolled her eyes again, leads her back into the living room and playfully slaps her back, and soon after this, he prepares to leave for his office. As Anna bids farewell to Christian, she's left feeling confused and disappointed. Just then, her phone rings, and it's her mother who inquires about her new beau. With a heavy heart, Anna admits that her relationship with Christian is complicated and unromantic. Despite the thrill and glamour they share, they're very different people with conflicting priorities and interests. The next day, Christian takes Anna into his red room, and the intensity of their relationship is taken up a notch. As he undresses her and ties her hair, Anna realizes that this Beatrice Essam experience isn't as harmful as she once thought. They engage in passionate lovemaking, leaving Anna feeling tired but content. She suddenly feels how lonely it is to lie in bed without Christian now that she is alone once more. The following evening, the Gray family is scheduled to have dinner. Elliot invites Kate and Christian invites Anna. Throughout the meal, Christian repeatedly touches Anna's thighs and crotch underneath the table. All of the other guests and family members are unaware of this because of a conversation between Anna and Christian's mother. When Christian learns that Anna is going to Georgia to visit her mother, it almost seems as if she's battling him. Given the condition of their relationship at the time, she could be trying to show him that he doesn't have complete access to her. When Christian and Anna are alone, Christian carries Anna over his shoulder and spanks her while complaining about having to lay her down. Christian kisses her and claims ownership of her, but Anna ultimately pushes away from him. She says she wants a typical love connection with him. She wants to know him and touch him, but he's still so far, even though they have been together for quite so time. But still, when Anna tries to inquire about the scars on his chest, Christian just replies that he had a difficult upbringing. It becomes clear that Christian had a very troubled life as he sits on the bed solemnly and talks to the sleeping Anna about his birth mother, who was a crack addict and an escort, though she has been dead for most of his life, saying that he can still remember terrible things. It is Anna's sincere desire to break through Christian's impenetrable guard. Eventually, Anna travels to Georgia to be with her lovely mother and stepfather. One afternoon, Christian unexpectedly appears there, surprising Anna. He takes her on a short flight and they enjoy their impromptu time together. Anna tries to persuade Christian to be more romantic, but he receives a call from work saying that the man must leave right away after returning home. She keeps agreeing to the intimate acts between them. She asks Christian why he wants to harm her and punish her in an effort to better understand him. At first, Christian dodges the question, but finally he snaps, declaring that this is just who he is and that he is fifty shades of screwed up. Anna commands him to punish her and do the worst to her in the heat of the moment so that she will finally understand him. As Christian whips Anna's buttocks six times in the playroom, Anna cries out in anger and disgust. Realizing that Christian is the wrong guy for her, she breaks up with him. When Christian tries to follow Anna to the elevator, she firmly urges him to stop, and the elevator door closes with tears in Anna's eyes. So guys, that's it for today. Check out this video on the screen to watch this amazing movie recap. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon to never miss any exciting movie recaps.